Hey everyone, it's Lisa with Are You My Cousin? And I am excited to be here with you today. Um, as you can tell, it probably looks really different behind me. I am still not in my home office. I am, if you've been following me on social media and stuff, you know that I'm actually helping my daughter move. So we are in her brand new home, except there's no furniture. So it's very echoey in here. So I apologize for the sound if it sounds really echoey to you guys, um, I apologize. I was just sort of, I had to kind of go with what I had here. Um, so, but I did get the Wi-Fi up and running about 30 minutes ago. So ah, we made it, I made it, right? So anyway, welcome, welcome. If you are new here, I want to encourage you to feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below that lets me know that you hear me and see me. Uh, feel free to tell me where you're, you're listening to. To me from um, i'm actually in knoxville tennessee today so and we could get some snow tonight so it's kind of exciting for us here and um hey Flo is from oregon oh the echoes aren't bad good i'm so glad because on my end they're really it's very echoey in here it's with all the hard services so um but i just really wanted to make sure i got a chance to come and talk with you guys because it's been a couple weeks with all the traveling and the holidays and so we made it into 2021 everybody hey mary jane um glad you're back with me again today and um so while everybody's coming in and we see oh we got pam from canada yay welcome well, you'd probably laugh pam i'm like freezing down here it's in the 40s so you probably would laugh at us down here because this is really cold for me um but anyway it's a beautiful i am in the foothills of, of tennessee which i absolutely love so good to, it's it's just beautiful here hey mayla from texas ah, we just left texas texas is getting some of that snow um joanne i was from new jersey hey june good to see you again from new hampshire um so glad you guys are are, are able to join me today um, hey, Cindy from Yakima, Washington. Wonderful. Susan from Portland. Hey, Catherine from West Tennessee. You're in this. Yes, we're on the opposite ends, but I did drive, literally drove across the state of Tennessee, um, coming through Memphis and uh, stopping off in Nashville for just taking a break um, and seeing some of the artwork downtown in Nashville, which was beautiful. Um, so, yes, definitely. Um, hey, Mary Ellen, from another from Canada. Uh, yes, I know. I do not know cold. That is the truth. That's why I like I like winter. It's my favorite season because I live in the South and it doesn't, you know, it gets cold, but not like Canada cold and or Minnesota cold and and then it changes in the next day. So that's pretty cool. I mean, it wasn't that long ago I was running in shorts. So oh, we've got Mary from Atlanta. I'm on that is that Australia. So it's six. Okay, so it's six a.m. and twenty three degrees Celsius there. Oh. I might be jealous about the 23, but maybe not the 6 a.m. part, but thank you so much for joining me. Um, so great, as you guys are coming in, feel free to, to um, chat away. Feel free, if this is your first time, ask questions as I, as I chat today, and I will make sure that I get those answered. And so if I, if I miss it, just pop it back in the queue. Sometimes they get kind of flying by on the side over there, and um, I miss a couple. Um, since I'm running a one-man show, one-person show here today. So anyway, I wanted to give you guys a couple of announcements, things that are happening here at Are You My Cousin? Um, one of the wonderful things is that, you know, I can take it on the road with me so that when I do go and as I am the last few weeks helping my daughter, you know, I'm able to, to take you guys with me, literally. So I have that. But one of the things that I wanted to let you guys know about, and I've got a link here I'm gonna put in the chat, it's called, I created something called the Everything Page. I, literally, I actually named it the everything page. And it is a new page on my website. You can find it in the top bar on the, um, the homepage or you can click that link. It is literally every, every freebie, every training, every um, product that I offer. I have no idea what that was, that funny noise that just happened. But anyway, it is everything that I offer that you can sign up for so it's it's all the freebies it's all the paid trainings it's all the ebooks all of that in one place now i will tell you it is brand brand new and i wanted to get it up so i could tell you about it today so there's a little design tweaking that's going to have to happen there but all the information is there so um, i would encourage you guys to take a look at it um, when we're done so that's there for you guys to i just thought it was easier to bring everything under one one place so that i did that Wanted to tell you about an upcoming live that I am doing with Find My Past with Jen Baldwin. Again, she is going to come back. She is going to talk about 
Irish ancestors and researching our Irish ancestors, as well as using the Find My Past Records. I am so excited about this because one, I just love talking with Jan, Jen, and I learned so much about um, English and Irish research, but, um, and I have my own Irish ancestors as well, but I'm really excited because I know a lot of readers have struggled with Irish research. So I'm super excited about that. Watch the emails on Monday that come out and watch Facebook, the Facebook page, all of that. I will get that out. I announced it as January 19th. I think it's actually gonna be the 18th and not the 19th, but watch for clarification on that um, in the Monday email, as well as all over my social media there. So you will have that definitely. Hey, Dave from Washington. Hey, Bridget, so glad you could join us today. Yay, we've got lots of folks coming in. Got Kathleen from Prince Edward, Canada and stay safe. Yes, I want everybody to stay safe out there. Um, so yes, yeah, so that is up and coming. I'm so, so excited about that one. If you missed the last one that Jen did, she did a fabulous one. It is um, on the YouTube channel and it is about searching for your, your American ancestors that could be hidden within the British records. Really fascinating stuff. So I would encourage you to, to go back and check that out. There's also, um, it's, um, it, it's a blog post on the website. I think it'll actually show up on the homepage if you go to the homepage there too. So wonderful. Okay, Sherry, glad you're here. Um, so what else do I need to tell you guys about? Okay, so I did want to tell you guys, thank you, thank you, thank you for sticking with me. I know I've sent a lot of emails out in the last month or so. Thank you so much. I'm constantly trying new things and I know that was a lot and I do, I, I'm backing off, I promise. And, but thank you for sticking with me and giving me the feedback when I asked for feedback, that was very, very helpful. And so I do value that. It helps me be able to know the direction to create products, to create blog posts, to create the freebies out there that would be helpful for you guys. It helps me understand what it is you're looking for. So I do thank you for that as well. So as 2021 comes, as we're going through 2021, I actually have some really kind of fun and crazy ideas to do as well. So you're going to see some other things coming up, some other opportunities that are going to be probably a little bit out of the box, a little bit out of the, the norm um, as far as formats are concerned for genealogy teaching. So just stick with me and um, just watch for the updates. You'll always find the updates on those Monday emails and then certainly on, on Facebook page as well. Um, wonderful. Hey, Janice, good to see you. Glad you're here. Bridget says she just finished her Zoom session with Mary Everly. Oh, yes. I bet that was fabulous. Mary, uh, for those of you who don't know, Mary Everly is um, the founder and creator of DNA Hunters, or the DNA, DNA Hunter Society. And um, she has, it's a membership group, which is fabulous. And just so you know, Mary will be here on with me next Thursday to do our monthly DNA YouTube live. So, cause she's my DNA lady. All right, guys, we are here because we are going to talk about how to research genealogy when you do not have much time. That is actually a very, very common theme. When I ask people and talk to people on, on social media, when I ask in the newsletters, they often are telling me and giving me feedback that one of the biggest frustrations for genealogy research is that they flat out do not have enough time. And now I can't promise you'll always have, ever have as much as you want because it's, it's who doesn't want to have those two hour chunks of research time or even just a, an uninterrupted hour of research time can really get us so far when it comes to our research. So that's really helpful. But oftentimes we don't have that. We might get 20 minutes here. We might get 15 minutes there. I don't want time to be a big excuse or a big barrier for you when it comes to research and genealogy because we can accomplish things in very small chunks. And I challenge you to create some of your, get some of your research done in 20 minutes. 20 minutes, if that's all you have, would be to do 20 minutes a day or 20 minutes every other day, whatever your time limits are. Now, I would say that the biggest thing and the most crucial thing about getting research done in a very short period of time when you're really limited is that you have to be organized. You need to know that when you sit down to do that research and you've got 20 minutes, set that timer and say, okay, this is what I'm working on for this amount of time. 
this is what I'm looking at for the next 20 minutes. If it's this, if you need to search census records, then that's all you're doing. You're searching census records and you know that immediately. When you try to research without an organized plan, regardless of whether you've got two hours or 20 minutes, is you, it's the danger is you spend half that time trying to figure out where in the world you left off last time when you research. Has anybody done that? Because I have, I, I absolutely have done that where I sit down to research. I'm like, Oh, okay. Did I look at that? Did I finish looking at that census record or was there something I wanted to go back to? Did I need to, you know, all of that. I just, I, I spin my wheels. I might, you know, I might redo something I already did simply because I didn't, I wasn't organized and I didn't make notes as to where I, what I was doing. So when I know I'm going to have a small amount of time, I always make a research plan, always make a genealogy research plan. Guys, you can find that all over the website. Um, just put research plan into the search bar on the Are You My Cousin homepage and you will find some posts about how to make that research plan. I always have that research plan because I need to know when I sit down, I need to know exactly where to start. And I need to know exactly what I'm looking for, what types of records I'm looking for. I don't want to spend time trying to figure out what else do I need to look at or did I finish that one, those kinds of things. So I always research with a plan. Now, I'm going to tell you, I research with a plan whether I have 20 minutes or whether I have four hours. I always research with a plan. I didn't used to, and it was really, it, it really, I would get really kind of mired down and with my research and have trouble getting it moving forward. But when I have that plan, I can always keep moving forward. The other thing that I like to do when it comes to researching in like say 20 minutes, 15 minutes, is I use a timer. Now it's not so much to end right on time, although that may be part of it because I have to be somewhere, but I use a timer and I'm, if it's a 20 minutes, then I'm going to set that timer for 15 because I want to, at 15 minutes, start to kind of wrap up and make sure, and this is absolutely crucial, that I make a note as to where I need to start the next time I sit down. So in other words, I make a quick note that, yep, I, I, I found, you know, I, I completed research in the you know, 1900, the 1910, the 1930 census, start with 1940 or start with eight, you know, 1880 census. So I always have that note. So as soon as I sit down the next time, I don't have to think, who oh, did I finish those 1900 census records? Is it time to, I can, I can go right back into it and, and pop, pop into it. So that is the biggest thing. So have a plan, use a timer and make sure you make note of where you start, where you need to start the next time. Those are really the three things that will help you manage research in a very small time period. And there are lots of little things you can do when you have like little short amounts of time. Maybe you don't have 20 minutes, maybe you have 10 minutes. Well, I mean, you can, you can do a quick search of a database or you could perhaps do a search of, um, maybe you need to know, you want to research in the say Tennessee archives and you want to, you, you want to look at what they have online. So you could create, you could take five or 10 minutes and actually just look at the site and go, okay, well, they have X, Y, and Z in their digital collections and make that part of your, make note of that and know that you would need to start going through those sites the next time you sit down. So you can do lots of little things like that. You can actually create a, a research plan or a short-term research plan of, you know, that you're researching your ancestor and you need to check to see where they are in the census records. So you may set that your plans that you're checking the census records. And then when you're done with those, you may move on to wills and estates, however. But knowing what you're looking for is a huge piece of the puzzle. And then um, the other thing would be, another thing I like to do sometimes in short periods of time is I will, this sounds kind of silly, I research how to research. So in other words, if I'm researching in a new location I've never researched in before, I might spend that 20 minutes time of just researching how to research, say in, you know, uh, Collins County, Texas, if, if that's where my research is taking me that day. Uh, 
so I'm going to check and see what resources are available online so when I'm ready to, to do it, I can. All right, guys, I would love to hear some of your thoughts, see what you guys actually find is helpful with your research when you're researching online. Um, so pop, if you've got a great tip, be sure and pop, go ahead and pop it into the comments. And um, I'd love to see kind of what you guys are doing as well. Um, in the, as, I, as you guys are doing that, I am going to pop in a link for you guys. It is, I have a little mini course. It's a free, it's a free mini course. And it is a little, it's about preparing yourself for genealogy research success and talks about setting up um, a genealogy research plan as, and, and it also goes over how to do that in Trello, which is a really cool tool to use. So I'm going to pop that in there for you guys. You can click on that if you haven't already done it. Some of you I know have, have gone through that. So um, yes, so that's there for you to do with that. But um, yeah, so it is possible to, to research our ancestors in these short periods of time. It, it's, you know, yes, it takes longer, obviously, when we don't have it, when we can't spend an entire afternoon. But as long as we're moving forward, then we're going to keep on going. You know, it's, it's really hard when you can't do any of it, right? I know. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I actually dream about genealogy at times. I spend so much time in it. So, um, yeah. So if you have a great tip, yeah, go ahead and put it in the comments and we'll see. Sometimes I know there's a bit of a delay here, so we'll do it. I do have to tell you guys this, this is really kind of funny, but I was, um, out running recently and, and, um, you know, just different routes because I'm not at my, I'm not at home. I'm in, I'm in Tennessee and I looked up and I'm standing up, I'm, I'm running past, you know, a genealogy society building and I thought how crazy is that that you know it's like a homing device thing you know it's like I'm out running I have no idea and I look up and here I am in front of you know this genealogy building so uh, you know you just never know where you're going to find it all right Kathy says hey another way to use the that timer would be to oh time would is scanning photos absolutely Kathy that's a fantastic idea when you just have a few minutes you can use those 20 scanning photos you can scan Photo I did using the PhotoMine app, and there is a blog post on that. I scanned, I believe it was 10, 10 photos in, I, don't know, it did, I mean, it was like two minutes and I had like multiple photos done and you can, and you can label them well as, and label them and labeled as well. So I would encourage you to um, check out some of that, check out that post, but yes, absolutely use that time. If maybe it's not research time. Maybe it is time that you need to scan those photos because we definitely want to make sure we're preserving our photos um, for future generations and getting them out there for other folks to see. So that would be a fantastic way to do it as well. Um, other things that you might want to do with some of those time. I actually will use, sometimes I'll just have a few minutes. It's, even if I can't get into my computer, I'll actually kind of just have a do. I'll brainstorm. I will sit down and I, I brainstorm. I call them my wild theories to see, and then I write them down, and they will eventually become into full on research plans. But sometimes when I'm at those brick wall ancestors, sometimes I just need time away from the computer, away from everybody, just to sit quietly, think, and, and just let my mind wander. And I'm always amazed at sometimes the what comes to me when I am doing that. And then I'll write down all those completely wild theories and create those research plans. And believe it or not, those are actually very helpful in working through some of those brick walls. I've had that actually work for me pretty well on that. So anyway, guys, I am definitely don't be intimidated with research or don't let lack of time prevent you from doing any research at all just because you don't have a, a big chunk of time don't let that prevent you from doing something on your genealogy research when you can i think that would be i i think we can definitely move things forward a little easier than maybe we always think about Catherine says she uses small amounts of time to rename and organize digital files absolutely it's a great time to be able to do that as well and make sure that Catherine that brings up a really good point is that so when you're researching, maybe in 20 minutes, you know, set that timer for 15 so you can finish off well and get everything is don't leave anything unlabeled. So like when you if you're researching census, make sure you, you know you download any documents, make sure you are labeling those so you don't have to kind of waste time later on going back through those as well. So but that, that, that's a great idea, Catherine. 
Um, hey, Judy from Lexington, Massachusetts. Hey, Lily, it's good to see you again. No worries about coming on late because you can always catch the replay. And absolutely, you guys can catch the replays and see all that afterwards. So I'm excited about that. Okay, note, guys, I am going to get back to unpacking a car <laughs> for my daughter and helping my daughter unpack the car and get things moved in. And um, I will see you next week. Now, next week, um, Mary Eberly will be here with me to talk on a topic relating to DNA. So I'm very excited to have her back again next week and watch the Facebook page post, watch the e Monday email for more details on the find my the upcoming find my past live that I'm doing with Jen Baldwin on Irish ancestors. I know I'm so excited. I'm glad to, I'm excited to be able to do that. So be sure and check all that out. And in the meantime, I will see you over on the Facebook page. Have a great day, guys. Bye.